Hi, welcome to Book Date with You, the platform where we recommend the best book to you. Today is episode 106, and we're going to talk about this book, No Grain, No Pain, by Dr. Peter Osborne. And who is Dr. Peter Osborne? Um, he is a doctor of chiropractic, an expert in functional nutrition, and is board certified with the American Clinical Board of Nutrition, oftentimes referred as the gluten-free warrior. He's one of the most sought after alternative and nutritional expert in the world. He's one of the world leading authorities on gluten sensitivity and lecture nationality nationally to both the public as well as doctors on this and many other nutritionally related topics. He is the founder Gluten-Free Society, the author of the Gluten-Free Health Solution and the Glutonology Health Metrics, a series of digital videos and ebooks designed to help educate the world about gluten. Um, in addition, he is the author of the additional best-selling book, No Grain, No Pain, which we are talking these sessions, and it was printed in five languages. I'll pass back to Joyce. Yes, thank you, Gideon, for the introduction. Um, Dr. Peter Osborne, he definitely is the pioneer to talk about gluten-free, gluten. And then I definitely gained a lot of knowledge learning from his education videos and also a lot of um, section that he actually uh, on board. So let me share with you about this book, No Grain, No Pain. I know that Gideon will have a lot of uh, questions regarding why can't we eat rice? Why can't we eat <laughs> all types of like even quinoa, uh, buckwheat, um, barley, all this thing. So let's us go and define what is grain. What type of things are considered grain? The normal one will be the wheat, ray, barley. This is the main tree. And then we have corn. Then we have rice. Then we have also oats, also consider grain. You have a bigger eyes right I now. I thought oats is healthy. <laughs> like a lot of people eat oats eat in the breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people, even myself, also fall into the trap last time. And then we have also pseudo grains. Pseudo grains we are called uh buckwheat, and then quinoa. It's also a pseudo grain. So all this is considered grain. All right. So let let me go into what Dr. Peter Osborne write in this book. The title is Why Healthy Foods Makes Us Feel So Bad. So look at that. Just now Gideon and I are really into last time say, oh, we are Asian, right? We are born to eat rice. So it is like kind of normal for our stable diet, our daily diet to be eating rice every single day. So sometimes and we those things that we consider healthy actually make us feel so 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 bad in a way of our body does not able to digest gluten. So let me go through in one by one. Okay. So when we talk about pain. Pain, we need to identify and in order to eliminate the pain, we need to know the root cause. What actually make you pain? So what it means the pain means whenever you have any pain in your body means you have inflammation. Yeah, your body is having your, the inflammation. So you need to get to the root cause of the pain. Pain, only you can really get rid of the pain and pain-free lifestyle. So when you get, sometimes if you ever notice, I believe that Gideon, you have the experience like, um, or seeing those people around you that people are really get used to the constant pain, the migraine, the headache, the persistent backache, or they have all this joint pain and they think that is normal. Which means that they fool our they fool themselves into thinking that this is actually normal. And uh, to them they feel like I just pain here and there, but I feel healthy. 
No, if you have any pain in your body, means that you are not okay. Your body is having is your body is inflamed, and there is a very clear connection between inflammation caused by certain、uh, foods that containing gluten. So, the 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 pain actually manifests itself in a different part only. It manifests itself into our joint or our skin or anything, depending to individual. So, what I want to tell you more is about gluten. What exactly is this gluten? You know, right now, whenever you go to the supermarket to shop for your food, you can see all the packing will tell you gluten free. Or even you you hear from your friends and family members to tell you that oh I'm in gluten free diet. What exactly is this gluten? A lot of people actually misleading by this gluten that we need to know what is that about. So let me give you the introduction about gluten. Gluten is a large family of a storage protein found in all forms of grain, including rice, corn. Then definitely wheat, and just now what I mentioned about the corn, the oats, the rice, the millets, all this is considered the one, the grain that contain gluten, and each grain contains different form of gluten. For example, the primary gluten found in wheat we call gliadin. There's a bombastic words, I know that, but it just let you know that. Gluten is a large family storage of protein found in all forms of grain. That's all you need to know. All right. So if you're gluten sensitive, you are likely to react in any form that gluten comes in a similar way. Regarding regardless of all the different types of glue, ah,、uh, grain you take. Okay, different types of good grain that you take actually can give you a deep. Same reaction if you are gluten sensitive. So individual response can come to the joint pain or any, for example, inflammation and the pain is definitely a common one. And some people manifest in the pain of joint pain or some people react in a way like they have skin issues, for example, like psoriasis, or they have, for example, arthritis. Joint pain, you know all this. So it manifests itself in a different way. Some it can goes to our internal organ to cause some inflammation, and definitely including the gut that I will tell you later on. So there are multiple ways that grain actually contribute to the pain. There are four ways. All right. So I definitely love to talk about gut just now. Remember, I told you about gut. Gut is our gastrointestinal tract, which from your food down to from the way your food come into your mouth, get into your stomach, and then go to your where intestine, small intestine, large intestine, until you go to your anus to pass out. You know, to pass the bowel out. But definitely, you see the grain. The way the grain actually can cause leaky gut, the gluten can cause leaky gut, which means that your gut lining tear and cause a lot of、uh, holes, which is the we call microscopic holes, and these holes will allow the bacteria, the chemical, the large uh uh proteins. For example, like gluten, and then the toxins, all things enter the bloodstream, and then confusing your immune system. It definitely will going to confuse your immune system. What is all this that coming into the blood? The chemicals, the toxins, and also all the different types of bacteria and also parasites, and then it will lead to internal warfare, meaning that you have internal war in within yourself. Immune system, and then it will cause the autoimmune condition, such as what you experience: migraine, the joint pain, and then arthritis, IBS, the 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 uh, and including all the different types of pain and inflammation that you are going to experience. So this is one of the major pathway that gluten can really cause pain. Second part. Is if you are gluten sensitive, so 
it will directly cause the inflammation. Direct. Means that you will directly feel, immediately feel, you have stomach pain. You immediately feel that, oh, your skin gives you a lot of rashes. And then, the how all this can go to your body is based on where is your weakest link in your body. If your weakest link in your body is like me, skin, then my skin will react. We have all types of rashes. If your weakest link is in your joint, then you have all types of joint pain. So that's just depending to individual. And then the, the second, the second, the third part is grain consumption also leads to vitamins and mineral deficiency. You will lack of vitamins and minerals meaning that you cannot absorb whatever you eat in your body. And then it will, because you lack of vitamins and minerals, your body will actually promote more inflammation, which means you actually cause more inflammation in your body and more pain. So grain is definitely very difficult to digest. And there is no human being in the world, in this planet Earth, they're able to digest gluten. No one. No one. So which means that you cannot digest gluten and you make your body to taxing your body to really, really to help you to digest food. So that's the reason why we should not eat gluten. So this is the four main ways how greens actually contribute to pain. So, okay, up to now, you feel like, oh, means that are uh, you taking all the wrong things in your life? <laughs> you know, it's the first time whenever, before I even read this book, I actually have, I know this already. So when I read through this, I'm like, whoa, that is really, really a lot. Then I want to bring out another one. That's a lot of people experience, especially elderly. They experience peripheral neuropathy, which means that the nerve pain, they have the nerve, you know, they, they either they tell you like, oh, my leg is pain. And then my, 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 I feel my hand is numb or tingling sensation or all this thing. It means that you actually have inflammation and gluten is actually neurotoxin. So, which means it can cause all the different neuropathy, meaning, meaning that you have all the nerve pain. So that is really, really difficult. And it can even cause, we call cerebral ataxia. Ataxia, cerebral ataxia is the part of your brain, one part of the brain at the back is called cerebellum. This cerebellum's function is to help you to balance your, your walking. So when your this part is inflamed, all right, it will cause you to have difficulty in walking. That's why you sometimes you feel you you feel dizzy, and then you feel like you cannot balance yourself. Like you know, if you cannot equilibrium yourself when you're walking, especially elderly, you go and observe it. You know, you will definitely see a lot of elderly having this challenge. All right, if they don't have any other issue, but it's actually the cerebellum. So even for tiger. If you have vertigo, it can be because of the gluten as well. So it comes to this part already. We know how disaster when you eat gluten, right? So let's go to the part that, you know, um, Dr. Uh, Peter Osborne actually write this three cardinal rules of nutrition. Regardless of whether or not the food contains gluten, there are some fundamental rules of nutrition to always keep in mind. So the first one is you cannot stay healthy without eating healthy food. Yes, I know that because I really experienced that, which does not include all the processed food, genetically modified packaged food. Your body simply just cannot adapt to handling all this. And then second rules. Eat nothing to which you are allergic, sensitive, and intolerant. If you're intolerant to things that you, once you eat it, you just feel not okay, not good, you just stop eating. <clears throat> if you feel pain or discomfort after eating certain food, you just stop it. Simple as that. No matter how 
you like it. Yeah, just stop it. Okay, so eating properly protects your gut and keeps it functioning well. So how to eat properly? You know, this is something I'm really, really uh, practicing and I want to uh, encourage you to do the same. Before you eat the things, smell first. Smell the food. All right, smell food first and then you only taste. Both stimulate and release the saliva. You know, your saliva is the first stage of your digestion and then your gastric acids in your stomach, it actually helps the digestion. So, you know, sometimes my my family members, are you dog? <laughs> you go and smell your food? I said, I just feel like I want to enjoy the food. So first step, smell the food. All right. And then second step, chew thoroughly. Just chew. Don't just put the food inside your mouth and then swallow. When you chew into pieces, smaller, 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 smaller pieces, it can help your body to digest food easier. Definitely is a helping part. All right. So chew thoroughly and definitely you will enjoy the foods better. Okay. So, and also definitely eat mindfully without the distraction. Don't go and watch TV. You know, you just eat your food. Focus, eat your food. I say focus. <laughs> I love to use this word focus and eat your food. Definitely, it is a very, very enjoyable time for you, you together with the food or the, those people around you without watching your TV or even your handphone. So now, we let's go to the last super part. So you ask me, Joyce, you cannot eat all types of greens. All right, what to eat, what not to eat. So you will tell me, oh, what to eat, what not to eat. So let's go to what not to eat first. Okay. So, as I mentioned to you that gluten is, exists in all types of the wheat. So, which means those food that are made from wheat flour, wheat flour, that you should not be eating. For example, crackers, cookies, pasta, pizza, rice cakes, popcorns. <laughs> And all the bread, right? <laughs> With bread. Yes, the bread. You, yeah, you just cannot eat it. All right. You just need to remove all this. And then uh, cereal, pasta, dairy products. No, no. And then one thing I want to remind people is vegetable oil. I fall into this trap last time. I do not know how bad is the vegetable oil. The vegetable oil that you can see in the market, like corn oil, uh, sunflower oil, uh, canola oil, all this is fall into the category of vegetable oil. So canola, uh, what else? Uh, just I mentioned corn oil. Corn oil. All this is type of grain, right? So we should not eat all this. So definitely sugar, refined sugar. We should not eat all types of refined sugar. Okay, and highlight to you is a lot of artificial uh, synthetic refined sugar that hidden into the processed food that you may not know. So when you buy your packaging, go back to the back of the package, read the nutritional info, which is in very small print. If you need to bring your magnifying glass, take your <laughs> magnifying glass to read that. If you see the, any words that, you know, I can provide you the long, long list about, you know, it doesn't mean that you need to write sugar. Yes, if you see sugar, it's sugar, definitely. High fructose corn syrup, it's another type. And uh, molasses is an, 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 another type. Dextrose, glucose, all this, it means sugar that you need to avoid by all means. Okay, next. And then Gideon will going to kill me to say that. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee is uh, not a grain. But um, because when you are taking care of yourself so much and uh, some people are actually allergic to coffee. I do have a friend that recently come to me that he has um, some muscle pain due to some injury of when he exercised and then put and caused some part of the muscle injury. And then the injury do not trigger him without him eating coffee. Once he eat coffee, drink coffee, and the pain will come. 
And then I asked him to really stop for at least few months to really check it out what it means. So at the same time, sugar is actually direct, diuretics. Diuretics means that you will cause you to dehydrate. Means that your body will lack a water, no matter how much you drink, because it is diuretic and cause you to release more uh, water and cannot let your body, the body use the water that you drink. So that is the reason why I try, for me, I do drink coffee, but I really keep it to the minimum as possible. All right. If you can, eliminate. Because I don't allergic to coffee, but I definitely love coffee as well. So, and then we go to the last part, what to eat. Okay. What to eat if you're talking about all things that you cannot eat already. Joyce, I have nothing to eat. Yes, you have something to eat. Eat those of real food, right? The real food, which means that you have the vegetable real vegetable, real fruits that you're going to eat. And then you go for different nuts, seeds, beans that you actually can take. How about some dry fruits like um, cranberries, ricin, uh, blueberries, all this. If best, choose organic. And then you have fish, wild caught fish, and then you have meat, all this. And then Dr. Uh, Peter Osborne, he actually have a long, long list of the different types of uh, food inside the book. So you can definitely refer back to the book. And the last part I want to share is uh, Dr. Peter also explained about supplementation. Okay, so it doesn't mean that you have to take all the different supplements in the world. People tell, come to me that, Joyce, I eat like 10 supplements in the world. Not necessary. So it's just like what you need your in your body, work together with your nutritionist, your coach, or your functional medical doctor to get to know what you are lacking that you need to supplement yourself. Dr. Peter uh, mentioned about omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and then vitamin B12, and definitely also herbs like turmeric. So this is uh, some of the summary that I get from the book to share with you today. And um, definitely highly recommend you to read this book. This is uh, quite a thick book. It's almost about 300 over pages. So I just like, I love to read because I'm a very science person. And I really hope that this part of information I share out really help you to think more into what you put inside your mouth to help you to eliminate the pain if you have the pain and live a pain-free life. So let me know in the comment section below what is a aha moment from my sharing today. And see you in the next episode.